The Ford Focus facelift is here today with Thomas and Autogefühl for you. You asked us to do this review. Here it is in Desert Island Blue as the ST Line X, also aka Thomas Blue. We have a restyled front here, new sporty grille, especially in the ST Line where we have the sporty accentuations also from the lower bumper. And there are also new headlamps, slimmer now, looks sportier, a little bit wider daytime running light right here and also optional matrix LED the ones you can also see right here right now design wise I mean I'm also going to talk about the difference to the Golf and the Astra also in driving later on but in styling wise this looks really cool doesn't it the length at 4 meter 38 or 172 inches and there's also the estate version available which would be around 31 centimeters or 12 inches longer but here the hatch for today and in the SC line you have the badge here and also red brake calipers. These here are the 17 inch wheels. Side profile, well here we have the rather cheap material, this rubber black. Now nah, that should be a little bit better I think. But overall also quite sporty side profile even with a, you know, some kind of hip area here. Look at that, it does look very wide in the rear, doesn't it? And then the modern signature here also for the tail lamps, that's beautiful. Contrasting lower party for the ST line and real exhaust tips, so no job for the AFAP today for the Autogefühl fake exhaust police, so they can stay at home for today. Interesting, by the way, that the ST line already comes with a sport suspension. Let's see later how sporty it will drive and how comfortable it will be. And by the way, the ST Line X is not like a crossover version then, it's just the ST Line plus a little bit more equipment. Car key does the job. Door closing sound is actually quite okay. And then here also interesting that Ford solution here with the protection system, you know, when you're like you know, in a supermarket parking lot or so and that you touch another door, nothing happens. It's still a nice idea, definitely, and yeah, works. And by the way, it's also available in here for the rear doors, the same thing. It especially looks cool when it's really fast, you know? <laughs> yeah, why not? Inside of the doors, also some soft touch here in the top bar, then the, you know, this carbon fiber look soft here, then here I have a fabric. Um, yeah, the services here don't look too premium, but even in Germany, you start about 23,000 euros for this car. Of course, not in the ST line with the bigger engine than you, but you still stay below, um, below 40k, for example. And here, then the steering wheel, ST line, red contrast stitches on the inside, still real buttons at the steering wheel. So much soft touch here at the dashboard, and then you get either get fabric seats for the Focus, or even in the Vignale, you get the Sensico for the full leatherette seats. Really cool uh, choice they have there. And here in the ST line, you have it a little bit sportier situations here shoulder uh, the shoulder bolsters and then also red contour stitches so looks nice but is it also comfortable so with the Ford seats especially I mean in the SUVs it's not not a big of a problem but I have to say it fits well as for my size one with 89 or six for two if you haven't uh, got that story so far I measure I re-measured myself and obviously I'm taller than the passport says but still it does fit here no problem as for headroom about the seating comfort is, I would say it's okay, but it's not great. So exterior wise, I do prefer the Focus over the Astra and the Golf. I would say it's more for me, it's like Focus, Astra, Golf, exterior wise. Seating comfort wise, I would really say that this one is the worst of the three. Um, might not be that relevant if you're not that tall, but that's my first impression. But let's take a look at the rest of the interior because now, more facelift changes are coming. Now the interior is really cleaned up, hardly any buttons left. It would start in a base focus, still with analog instruments, optional then here, or included in most of the higher trims, 12.3 inch digital instruments. So already if you go mid trim, for example, you'll get these. On the right side, in the very base version, still a Ford Sync 3 system with eight inch small screen, this one then here, beginning middle or higher trims, and also included here in the SC line, is the all new SYNC 4 system with 13 inch of size. And reminds us of the Mustang, just that it doesn't have, you know, the Mustang E, not vertical, but here horizontally. Looks really modern and cool. Temperature unit is integrated here. You know, most of us do prefer manual climate gauges. However, 
for a digital solution, it always stays in the same place and is somewhat easy to reach. You can also use this here as slider. Um, so this is also possible. Um, yeah, also let's try the, the voice control. I'm cold. You can adjust the temperature by saying set temperature followed by the temperature that you want. Okay. For example, set temperature yes. to 21 yes. degrees. S set temperature to 21 degrees. I just follow her voice. Say the temperature that you'd like. Set temperature to 21 degrees. About that, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but we can press it as well. <laughs> Here, the heated steering wheel is uh, available only when the engine is running, but then you can press it right here. So again, for a uh, digital solution, quite okay. Here you see Apple CarPlay, Android Auto integration, wireless and with cable. I do prefer the cable solution. There is also this optional sound system we have in here. And let's listen to that. B&O sound system. Wow, that's an awesome sound. Hmm, that's nice. Great song, by the way. I know you like to listen to my playlists. Uh, so definitely go for the B&O sound system if you like music. The main system here by Ford. You can now also in the SYNC 4 use the car internal GPS, although Apple CarPlay and Auto is connected. If you maybe have like, you know, not enough data left or something. Oh, I just activate the rear wiper somehow. Uh, oh, yeah. Um. Ah, there it is. <laughs> so I, I was wondering why is it running in the, in, in the rear window. So here back you can see it is not that responsive. It takes me a little bit too long. It is a you know wide display here. Yeah, probably I would still go then for the um, you know Apple CarPlay Android Auto connection. Let's take a look here. This is kind of like the main menu where you also have all the settings. But here it's not that responsive. Could be a little bit faster. However, from the whole solution, yeah, they are also, I think, the Astra and the Golf are not really better. Here in this lower area, start, stop, engine. And here you can also see, uh, this again, the solution. We know it from Mercedes, actually. I haven't expected that they would say something like this. So this is here then a button, for example, for the driving modes, normal, eco, and sport. But it's the same button also for the defrosting and so on. At least still a manual volume jog here. Lower part, USB-C or USB-A, charging and also connection for the CarPlay and Android Auto, but there's also inductive charging bit. But you know, yeah, call me old school, but I trust the cable connections more than the wireless ones. Here today, manual gearbox driving, yes. And we know Ford does do great manual gearboxes and it's so smooth when you put the gears in. Oh, I just love that. It feels so great. So Mazda and Ford to me are the best ones as for the manual gearboxes. Looking forward to drive that one today in the driving part. Then here, cup holders, you can adjust them as for the size with these. And then we have the armrest cover here, nice little red cover, and you can open it. And it's yeah, not the best attachment, but also not the worst. And here, more space. Digital instruments, let's see here with a nice startup. Yes, okay, 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 okay. Here also the uh, long time average for this very test vehicle, 6.6 .6 liters and 1 kilometers. So that's some 36 mpg US or some 45 mpg UK. And that's about it, but it's everything clear to read, left side speed, right side RPM. You can also get this head up display here, but I think these head up displays are not too useful because here, this is once again a solution with this separate plexiglass layer. And now here, the rear area. Hard pack at the inside of the doors. Hmm, okay, but we also have the ST line styling with the red control stitches. That's nice. Of course, the main question is how much comfort and also how much space do we have here in the rear? This being the hatch version. Let's get inside. And well, the seat is set to my driving position. You see here the recess does fit quite well. It's not too much space left, but it does work. And headroom wise, also, so at least four tall adult proof. So actually, comfort is quite decent here in, in the rear. Almost feels more comfortable in the front seat. Here in the middle part, you can also sit, gets close than with the knees because of the side here from the seats. Um, but yeah, you can also do trips then with five tall adults, no problem. 
you do already fold the seat bench from here. Other than that, you have the cup holder area, which are also adaptive. That's nice, so great attention to detail in this case. And in the lower part, you have two more chargers, also USB-C, USB-A split. It's a great idea because we are still in that transition phase. The hatch, well, it's a hatch, right? So it's a hatch with a hatch. Yeah, <laughs> and interesting sound, right? A little bit high frequency, but what's really cool here, these, sorry, Jonas. Yeah, I wonder, yeah, that was confusing, Jonas. I'm so sorry. <laughs> here, top part here, I mean, you shouldn't, or you can close it with two uh, hands in like, it's more like you can <laughs> do some exercise here. <laughs> but uh, I think it's really cool. You have both solutions here and really good handle. Yeah, deals like these make these cars also interesting. Why not? Then the trunk area here is actually quite high because they have no, you know, seamless door, uh, seamless hatch sill down here. But, you know, that makes just more height. Then here, the length is about 80 centimeters or 30 inches. The same goes also, by the way, for the total height, 80 centimeters or 30 inches. And the width, a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches. And the overall length, let's take a look right here, to the front seats then is almost 160 in meter or 62 inches. So I said exterior wise, Focus is my favorite, more like Focus Astra Golf, exterior-wise. Interior-wise, hmm, that's a really tough question. Honestly, I'm not a fan of either of the three interiors. From these three, I would not pick the Golf 8, not the Astra, not the Focus, but the Golf 7.5, the Golf 7 facelift. Yeah, so I would rather buy this one used interior-wise than, uh, you know, the other three here. But if you rate the three new versions here, Astra, Golf and Focus, interior-wise, mm, I would probably go this indeed as a last from the whole, you know, build quality and so on. I would there maybe say this time an Astra Golf Focus. As engines, a 1.5 liter diesel or the one you can see here, the turbo petrol engine, three cylinder and 125 horsepower without mild hybrid or now 125 horsepower with mild hybrid or the one you see here today, 155 horsepower with mild hybrid. If you want more power, gotta go for the 2.3 liter four cylinder from the ST, the true ST. Here we go, driving part, Thomas's driving lounge with the Ford Focus facelift and we have here the 155 horsepower version, mild hybrid of that one liter three cylinder EcoBoost engine. And power wise, so far quite decent, does have the turbo, so also here uphill third gear, you can get up to speed, no problem, here at 70, km, 70 kilometers an hour or around 40 miles an hour. The three cylinder sound is always a little bit more accentuated than comparison to the four cylinders, so that sounds somewhat even sportier, actually. Very interesting. And indeed, already told you in the interior part, that gearbox is great. It's just so crisp, so much fun to put in the gears. Usually I do prefer automatic gearboxes because they just give you more comfort. And in modern sports cars also, they are even sportier and give you better performance. This one here more manually engaging and with Mazdas and with Fords, I sometimes say, yeah, it's maybe a good choice to get through the manual gearbox because they are really so much fun. Once again, also safety aspect in automatic gearbox, you can keep your hands on the steering wheel all the time. Yeah, but if you want to save some money or intentionally go for that because it's fun, here in the Ford Focus, it's actually a nice choice. Also a nice shifting lever overall. The way, you know, the, the length of the way is also perfect and yeah, it's just fun and just engaging. I love that. Steering input is very direct, feels somewhat artificial. Uh, it feels it would be reacting too much at times. You know, see here, just really a little and then it immediately like, changes, like, whoa, whoa. So you have to be gentle with that. It, let's see how does it change in the driving modes. So here we go, that's normal, but we can also go to sport, for example. Throttle input is increased then. Steering feedback-wise. Hmm. Does 
doesn't seem too different though. No, that doesn't really seem too different though. Usually that's the case then. Um, yeah, I don't know. But what's the case is, again, sport mode with the steering input and also the gauges change to red. And this is steering input. The throttle input here, of course, is increased and red gauges. That's what I want to say. But in a manual gearbox car, these driving modes don't matter so much. It's more that the automatic gearboxes are then tuned for that. Noise insulation here at uh, countryside roads speed is decent so far. We also head to the motorway and test that, the German Autobahn in this part here today. You've seen earlier with around six and a half liters or more kilometers, it's also an acceptable fuel economy. So, you know, this uh, higher 30 mpg US, higher 40 mpg UK. So it's okay, this mild hybrid drive frame does give you some more efficiency. Of course, not a huge, huge game changer, but it's actually overall quite decent. And I really love to shift this one indeed. Comfort wise from that seating here, indeed, for me, it's a tall driver and maybe it's my body posture, I don't know, but I don't feel that I would like to drive this car on a very, very long trip. So once again, seating comfort here, when I have this big three comparison, Ford Focus, Golf 8, and the um, Opel or Vauxhall Astra. Seating comfort wise here, the worst to me in the Focus. And I had this exterior where I said, I really like the Focus best on the exterior. I like it least from the interior, besides shifting here. But then what about driving? That's a really tough thing because all three of them drive really very well. The all new Astra also drives exceptionally well. And Ford, they can do great gearboxes and they can also do great suspensions. And this suspension here is the sport suspension for the ST line. And in these suspensions, you might often find some, yeah, okay, it's sporty, but it's maybe too rough and you lose too much comfort. Here, I think it's okay. We have the 17 inch wheels mounted here. You know that the true ST even come with 19 inch. So this vehicle does in general offer bigger wheels. But here I think it's still quite okay. You know, you have some more sporty feedback from that suspension that it's fun to drive. It's really a lot of fun to drive. At the same time, it's not too rough actually. So suspension is fine here also with that sportier tune. But then again, which one of the three, the big three, Astra, Golf and Focus is most fun? Well, this one is, whoa, that was surprising here behind that tree to have that stacked up line of cars. So now getting to the motorway, German Autobahn. So which one of the three is most fun? It's a really tough choice. So this one is indeed a lot of fun and the Golf also drives exceptionally. But I felt from that, let's say, unity with the vehicle, not in the plug-in hybrid, but in the pure petrol, I felt that in the Astra you felt most one with the vehicle. However, this would not be the deciding factor saying like, oh, the Astra is so much fun to drive than the Focus. So this is not the deciding factor because this one is a lot of fun. To me, the most deciding factor would indeed be the comfort and the seats. And it might also depend from body to body. So when you, for example, decide between the three hatches, then I'd recommend to go to the dealer and retake really a test seat and see which seat do you feel most comfortable in with. So now to the motorway and we start about 70 kilometers an hour here now. We're in the third gear, already good RPMs. And at 70 kilometers an hour, 45 miles an hour, let's accelerate. Let's see how that goes. It's 90, 100, was and 70 miles an hour. It's still quite decent. It's not a performance engine, but even here in fourth gear, we can still get it up to speed. Now about 140 kilometers an hour, or 130 kilometers an hour, 80 miles an hour. Noise insulation, still decent. Ford traditionally also has these heatings of the front windshields. I'm not sure, if, maybe if my eyes are good, with glasses then of course, but I do see the small, the fine lines. To me, it's one of the most annoying things. I can't stand it at all. But we also have a lot of customer feedback in the comments. Maybe you can also comment on that if you have a Ford with a heated windshield. That some of you say, mm, I don't care, you know, it's a good option to have that and I don't see it. You know, I, when I 
look at it, I don't see it at all, but I do see it. And the Golf there, for example, offers this integrated um, like a foil where it goes all over the windshield, but you don't see the, um, you know, like the individual l tiny cables inside. So um, there are better solutions for that on the market. Meanwhile, once again, behaves very well here on the motorway, 130 kilometers an hour, 80 miles an hour. Also here, but ah, yeah, the steering is just too artificial to me. Then it shakes up too much, I think. So once again, yeah, we are in the sport mode there, but it's just, yeah, you have to be very gentle with the steering, definitely. But then again, it's easy to steer in and out when you're in the parking lot or something. But the stability of the suspension is good. It gives me a very, uh, you know, very calm driving feeling, calm and collected. And also the balance of the vehicle is actually really nice. So that you get along with it very well and also feel very safe here on the motorway also here with the lane change. So overall, it's a tough choice between Golf, Astra and Focus. All of the three have their strength, definitely. Also really enjoying the ride here. But you know, I did give you some hints of which vehicle I would go for actually at this moment. But the best thing, of course, is to ride, compare them right now. Here, the Golf 8 review, the recent one with the infotainment update more than also the Opel or Vauxhall Astra in our extensive review and see you there.